So uh, we weren't expecting to be recording this week, but uh, we did say, hey, if any news happens, and there's surely got to be something that happens before Thanksgiving, then by all means, we'll pop on and do a show. Hey, guess sure what, enough. kids? <laughs> <laughs> Things happened. Things happened, and not just of the minor variety either. We're talking of the uh, major variety, so we're going to not even bother with the uh, the banter and go straight into this, which is mm. Zen Studios has been purchased, acquired, mm. if you will, uh, by a group called the Embracer Group, and uh, particularly uh, as part of Saber Interactive, um, Which is an arm of of um, Embracer, right. one of the mini arms by the sound of so, things. Right. So basically, group. Embracer went on a a spending spree, and over the past mm. well year, has purchased what is it over 13, 13 studios. Yeah. Um. That's that's a very very active acquisition. Right. Period. It seems like a lot to acquire in a year. So. This company is the same company who uh, has THQ, which is THQ well Nordic. Known. Nordic, yeah. Which I, because I think there's a many THQ. There's so. a many THQs. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, this is an area that we're we're sort of a little bit on the on the shady side with. We know we know pinball licensing and how that works, but we don't know how studios work and all the different arms of them as right. much. So it's a very interesting world. So of um, course, that they just opened up. Everybody freaked out immediately without oh, applying any logic. Oh, um, doom and gloom! It's going to become another PopCap versus EA. You know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, me and Jared sat back and kind of went, "Does this sound like a bad thing to you?" I don't know. What do you think, Jared? Is, is this went, a bad nah. idea? <laughs> I went nah. No, no it sounds fine. So uh, we're here a to massive, talk you. We're here to talk you all off a ledge. Throwing money at, at the, <laughs> like I don't see that as a really bad idea for for a uh, a burgeoning studio. So yeah. So let's start off with the the what are the potential negatives? Let's just get mm. those out of the way. What people have been yep. saying, and that is. Oh my God! Here comes a larger company acquiring a small independent company. Uh, the larger company probably could care less about their content. They're merely buying them for library Brand. cachet, you know, to build up their portfolio, and they're going to just wind up dissolving Zen within a matter of years. Mm. There's con number one. Do I have that right, Jared? Yeah, that seems like a common sentiment out there at the moment. Okay. What would you say uh, comment number two, negative-wise, was uh, with this acquisition? Uh, would it have something to do with, you know, Zen becoming one of the big guys and not actually worrying about pinball anymore and just focusing on all the RPG stuff and only worrying about, you know, that sort of line of the business. Yes, that would be another one because <laughs> there was a lot of talk about how, oh, they were really excited by Zen's RPG games and want to help expand those and mm. uh, help Zen grow those into a larger thing. And everybody went, but what about the pinball? Because some yeah. of the other studios, if I'm not mistaken, are RPG studios. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so that was a, a negative thing. And then uh, ultimately it was that that Zen will lose its independence and uh, will purely be making things on a commercial front. Uh, it'll all become about the numbers of and not the content. Do, do you think it's a, not about that now? Like... <laughs> is it is it that what a studio does to remain profitable? Like, <laughs> I just don't understand that logic at all. Right. So <clears throat> the way that me and Jared have kind of looked at it is, well, no, this is more like you're an independent studio that's been wanting to grow. You really need capital, though, injected into you to afford the expansion that you want to go in. And mm. here comes somebody saying, hey, we'll buy you and we'll give you that capital. Seems seems pretty reasonable. So I don't know. 
there's there's that angle of it. Uh, the other thing is now that you have various studios that you're going to be aligned with, by all means, they can help shore up the negative aspects that are currently within your company. And I saw somebody point this out. If there's a problem with Zen's quality assurance uh, regarding they don't have enough playtesters or uh, whatever goes into to QA uh, at the studio itself, at the studio level, before it ever goes out to beta testers, um, that there are specifically one or two of the companies that got acquired where that's their primary focus. Right. So you become, you basically go, look, we need this service. Oh, let's go to the umbrella company and ask for that. Not literally Not the, the umbrella yeah, company. Yeah, this isn't Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no T-virus here, but the umbrella company <laughs> that sits over the top. <laughs> um, so there's that. We always point this out too. You got the Zen Pinball Division. You've got the Zen All the Other Games Division. <laughs> yeah, let's call it that. <laughs> and while the two might mingle a little bit and share certain resources, uh, for the most part, they're two separate entities. Um, mm. And one's workflow does not affect the other's workflow. No. So we really need to get off this idea that, oh my God, see, Zen's just going to drop pinball and go whole hog into RPG. Quite the opposite. <laughs> mm, it is rather the opposite. This is not... Uh, the Farsight was structured like that. They had all their eggs in one basket and they all... The, the whole studio was just pinball, pinball, pinball. So when they had another, like, your contract job, like, you know, pro bowling insert title here, they had to take people off the pinball side of things to do that. But that's not the case with Zen. They've got dedicated resources in each department that look after a specific part of the business. Not only that, but think about this. Again, influx of capital. What would that mean for Zen Pinball specifically? Well, mm. for starters, well. maybe the Pinball <clears throat> division, and probably Zen in general, I would imagine their RPG division too, increases in employee size. More yeah, employees, get a family, more content. Boost. Yeah, for sure. I mean, how else are they going to keep up with the, the, the extra content that you would expect a large corporation like Embracer to demand of their acquired companies right you know uh point number two there are a bunch of licenses out there um whether you want to talk bally williams licenses or just licensing in general like how they have the star wars license or the marvel license um mm. these things aren't cheap and they're really not if all of a sudden you have a larger entity with an influx of cash coming in saying hey we can help your bottom line so that you're not so razor, razor thin on the margins, you can afford mm. to reach out and actually extend beyond what you thought you were able to extend beyond before. Hey, now maybe certain licenses become that much more obtainable. That's right. Yeah, like the, maybe some of those unobtainium licenses that we've seen in Belly Williams pinball machines aren't so unobtainium anymore. Right. You know? Um, maybe, and we keep on saying this, Who's the logical place that Stern is going to land when the time comes? It's going well, to be it's going to be at Zen. And what's the problem? Mm -hmm. All their tables are licensed, and licensed. they ain't cheap. <laughs> no, they 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 don't license junk at Stern. They license really good quality properties. Yeah. So uh, I don't think that's going to be such a concern anymore. Right. So if you wanted to make yourself appealing in your pitch to Stern to say, "Hey, come over with us." Everything's and, cool. Right, Don't everything's worry cool, about but, but it's like, well, why would we want to go with you? We already went with Farsight. Look what happened there. They didn't produce any of the pinball tables that we would have wanted them to produce because they refused to pay Pony up for the license. And you'd go, aha! <laughs> Pile please, of see this, please see this 10-year plan about your problems and uh, how we're going to solve them here. <laughs> and, and you know what? You, you bring up the 10-year plan that uh, Mel has himself brought up in our interview with him. Uh, mm. perhaps that's why they have a 10-year plan because this acquisition didn't just happen you know over the course of a couple of weeks this has got to have been months in the making well acquisitions don't just happen no like they 
they usually take a fair while to sort out from a legal perspective. So you would think that, you know, just as they did with FX3, with their plans to actually do Williams Pinball, this move to become acquired as part of a larger um, group is definitely strategic, definitely part of the 10-year plan, and probably would be instrumental to execution. So this can only be a good thing. For the most part. <laughs> I mean, I mean I look, so. look, there are always possibilities that it all goes to... And... Yeah, it could, it could go to CAC, but look, you know... I don't think that's going to happen. I don't either. And the way that Zen has been positioning themselves, this is the natural progression of things. And the way that I kind of liken it in terms of where this can go, uh, my two favorite games on PlayStation were the Uncharted series and uh, God of War. Both of those were independent studios, Naughty Dog and Mm -hmm. Santa Monica Studios. Sony realizing that, you know, although they had paid to lock up, you know, like the Crash Bandicoot series to be a PlayStation exclusive, Mm. they eventually realized, hey, maybe we should just buy the studio itself, which they did. So they bought both (laughs) Naughty Dog. Well, I think, did they buy out Naughty Dog? No, I don't think they actually bought Naughty Dog. Um, But they certainly locked them up into long-term exclusivity. And then, but I think Santa Monica Studios, they did actually buy... Uh, But what happened then? That was when suddenly they were able to expand their teams and blow up the games into much more complicated things. They become the very thing that you absolutely want to play. Mm. Because they've got the development resources to actually make the game far deeper than it could ever have been before. Uh, exactly. So mm. that's why it's. I know, like you said, oh my god, it's going to be PopCap. PopCap wasn't exactly positioned to to be in a place of power at EA. Um, no, EA is a <laughs> EA is a bit of a juggernaut, really. Right, so, and this and yeah. and the Embracer Group is certainly not EA. I mean, have you has anybody ever heard of Embracer Group or Saber? Just mm. in general, prior to this? No, never. I have no. no recollection of them at all. And, it just came out of nowhere, basically. And if anything, this is Zen on the rise to becoming EA. Mm. Potentially. Yeah. It's it's like, I think, where, whereas EA is a larger game development studio. But it started off really group, small. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they They were really small. Yeah. Like, and now they're huge because they just keep on buying up studios and right. buying up properties. But the thing about EA is that they're a game studio, and I don't think Embracer Group is a studio. They're a conglomerate of businesses. Exactly. By a, like I said, they're over. they're having a portfolio, a library of stuff. Yeah. So it's a very different. It's a very different notion to the the whole relationship between PopCap and when they got bought out by EA and how terrible the games are now. Because because EA and microtransactions. So I, th- I just kind of tend to fall back on when... At the start of the year, when Zen was saying, oh, 2020 is going to be wild and you guys, we can't wait to show you everything that's going to be happening. I have to believe that that's because they were planning for this. They understand what joining this group is going to mean for them. And that pinball is only going to get bigger with Zen, as yeah. will their RPG stuff get bigger. Yeah. And the more Zen branches out and has successful platforms of games of different types, the uh, more attractive they'll become to to potentially expand further in the future. Like, and it helps them weather any storm that happens with any one particular game not doing well or all of a sudden there being some catastrophic failure of some sort. Or, I don't know. That's right. Definitely not all eggs in one particular basket. So they do have a number of different like product lines now um, that they can lean on and experiment with and decide whether they're viable or not or can them or keep them or whatever. You know, There's plenty of flexibility that they can use now. Um, 
in their portfolio of games. So again, don't think this is anything to really worry about. And if anything, it should be something to be very happy about. I mean, about. Mm, I'm more than optimistic about it. I actually think I'm very happy about it. This can only mean good things for the studio, I think. And I'm happy to eat my hat if that's not the case. <laughs> I don't have a hat, but I'll eat something resembling Jared a hat. Jared is giving it the blocking yep. stamp of approval if yeah, we had right. a stamp. If we, if we had a stamp, it, it would absolutely get one.